So NNN recently released three new amazing updates to their already incredible AI agents, but I think a lot of people miss. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what these three updates are, when to use them, and specifically when you're building workflows for your clients or for production ready, how to use these and utilize these powerful updates. So let's jump right into the video. I don't want to waste too much of your time. Just please make sure you like and subscribe if you want more content like this. All right. So the first release is, and this is probably one of the most powerful ones, is the fallback chat model. So I'm going to go ahead and actually show you a quick demo of the fallback chat model so that we can see exactly what I'm talking about. But essentially, if you go to add note and if I click on uh, AI agent or search for AI agent, so I'm going to show you exactly what, what you get when or how to activate this fallback model. So when you click on the AI agents, now you see that in this new update, there's this uh, uh, option called enable fallback model. So if you toggle this, what ends up happening is now, as you can see right here, now it has chat model and then fallback chat model, meaning that you can click on this plus sign and you can provide basically one primary chat model. So like an open AI or let's say uh, a Google Gemini, and then you can also add a backup backup model. So I've already created that here. So if I show you right here, as you can see, this AI agent one, I'm just connecting this to a chat trigger and I'm saying enable fallback model. And as you can see, I am providing the primary model as my open AI uh, chat GPT 4.1 mini. And then as my fallback model, I'm just using Cloud Sonnet 4. So let's go ahead and test this out and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. First of all, obviously, whenever you're interacting with this AI agent, what's gonna end up happening is that your AI agent is going to use the primary model, but for some reason, if it fails, it's gonna move on to the fallback model. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the open chat here so that we can test this out. So right now, like I said, I'm just gonna type, hello, how are you? So as you can see right here, now it's utilizing the uh, OpenAI chat model because obviously that's the primary model that it's working. But now let's go ahead and I'm gonna maybe create a new account, new credentials and just put like a wrong API key or something like that. I'm gonna click on save and obviously you'll see that couldn't connect with these settings because it's a wrong API key. Let me get rid of all this stuff. So right now it's uh, uh, attached to OpenAI account two, which means this is the wrong one, right? So now if I type again and interact with this AI, what's gonna end up happening, or it should actually realize that this primary chat model is not working. It should move to the backup or a fallback model. So let's go ahead and say something again. Hello, I want to know how to make money, right? Something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press enter. Now, as you can see right here, there you go. So now it showed error on my primary model. And then now it's utilizing the Anthropic chat model because in our case, this, this is our backup model. And there you go, as you can see right here, it's giving me all of the dis different information based on the query that I presented. So now if I go back inside this model, as you can see right here, authorization failed, please check your credentials, incorrect API key provided. And obviously the AI engine automatically moved to the next model without me putting any kind of prompt in this. And again, this is super powerful, especially if you're creating uh, workflows that might require additional uh, kind of backup plans, especially for production. So when you're creating workflows for clients and we're creating automation for clients, this is actually an incredible option because sometimes whether it's you or the client, maybe they uh, have an API key that, you know, might run out of uh, funds or something like that, then it's always amazing to have a backup model like this. So that way, uh, if anything fails, it will automatically move to the backup. And as you are kind of going through the QA process, you can always fix it without ruining your workflow automation completely. So this is a super powerful uh, update and I'm super happy that they did this actually because a lot of people were asking for this for a long time. So that's quickly on the fallback chat model. I'm going to do a bit more deep dive later on uh, when I go through and create like separate workflows, but I just wanted to give you a quick introduction. So the second update is AI agent as a tool. Now this is an amazing update. So now what you can do is in the AI agent, you can actually attach a separate AI agent as a tool. As you can see right here, I have another AI agent attached to my primary AI agent as a tool, meaning that now inside my AI agent, I can prompt and say to when to use these different AI agents as tool, basically like an orchestration layer. Right. And I already did a step by step tutorial on this and I created like an AI agent army. So this is an example, for example, you have an orchestration agent right here. And inside this orchestration agent, I'm in the system prompt. I'm telling it you are a personal assistant in this case. Like I said, I did a step by step tutorial on this. So I'm going to put the link in the description for this video if you're interested in watching it. But essentially, I'm giving it tools available, email agent, calendar agent, calculator, company knowledge. These are all AI agents, as you can see, as a tool that's attached to it. 
And each of these agents have the ability to have their own tools, right? The calendar agent, for instance, has its own tools, which are all these Google Calendar events, right? Update events, delete events, get events, all of that stuff. Same thing with my e email AI agent. It has its own tools attached to it. It has its own uh, chat model attached to it, its own memory. And then inside this AI agent, you're essentially telling it when to use this tool for what purpose. So in our case, in this, in this scenario, right? If you click on tool here, and if I look for AI agent, now you can see right here, it says AI agent as a tool. And now I can attach this agent to it and give it its own memory, its own tool, and give it a prompt when to use this AI agent within this kind of orchestration here. Again, I, I kind of went through it, did a, a lot more details in that previous video. So feel free to watch that if you're interested in uh, 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 watching how to utilize this further. But again, this is a powerful update because what this allows is again, the ability because before if you wanted to att attach a separate workflow a separate ai agent you actually had to um, attach it as a separate workflow but with this new update it makes things very easy and also reduces a lot of the hallucinations so super powerful update make sure you check that out and utilize that all right so the third one this is also probably one of my favorite ones as well now you have the ability to mu attach multiple models and you can instead of having a fallback model, let's say you want to have multiple models. Now you can add this new node, which is called this model selector. And inside the model selector, you can add up to 10 new, uh, up to 10 models. If I click on 10 right here, you'll see now this thing has 10 new models that I can attach to, and I can literally go and attach one for for each different one now the use case for this would be actually when you're using like smaller models for one particular purpose or when you're using like a larger model so let's say you want to start with like gpt4 or, or gpt4.1 nano and only utilize gpt4.1 whenever it's needed now a good example workflow for this and this is uh, i didn't create this this was uh done by let me go ahead and bring this up by a gentleman called Mario. So this is a good example, and I'm gonna show you exactly what this is, but essentially what this is doing is he built this uh, workflow that uh, takes in customer complaints and generates a response that's being validated before returned. And it says, if the answer is not satisfactory, the response will be generated again with a, with a more capable model. And the way the, the way he is doing this is he's using this um, switch model node, which is basically very close to uh, our model selector and he's <clears throat> having a code inside this Langchain node to, to, to say, hey, only use the next model whenever the response is not validated, right? And the way to do that, again, I did a separate video on this again, but this is a super useful update as well, whether you want to use this inside your cloud account as this model selector, or to be honest, like I found this Langchain node a lot more useful and customizable because you can actually add a code inside this node. And by the way, the way to use this, and as you can see right here, I'm on my hostinger. This only works on your local host or uh, on a VPS because uh, obviously this is a Langchain node that, that was created. So this is not gonna work on your cloud. But if you use that, cause I know some of you have been asking me how to utilize this inside, inside your hosting. And the way to do that, you can actually go to uh, hosting or VPS. And I'm gonna put that link in the description. So what you're gonna do, because hosting is one of the best options to host and then on a virtual private server. Um, and if you go, I'm gonna put the link in the description on this, go ahead and check it out. You're gonna to go to this link and it's gonna bring you up right here where it says self-hosted NADN no code. You can select multiple options here. I would select going with KVM2 because that's what I use and it's probably the best option out there. And it's actually the cheapest uh, for what you get because they have really great discounts right now. So you're gonna click on choose plan here. And once you click on choose plan, then what's, this is gonna take you to your cart where now you have the ability to choose the period. If you want to use this for long-term, I would suggest sticking with the 24 months, but you can also use 12 months as well. Uh, because the great thing is, uh, Hostinger is one of our main channel sponsors. So we already have a coupon code that they gave us. So if you go to uh, have a coupon code, just click on that and you can put AI workshop. If you type AI workshop, and if you click on apply, what this is going to do is this is going to give you an additional 10% off. So, I mean, this is literally the cheapest possible option you can get and the most reliable in my opinion. So once you put your coupon code on the left-hand side, you can see all you have to do is collect, make sure you're on the application and all you have to do is click on NADN here and it's going to pull up this confirmation page. You're going to click on confirm 
and all you have to do is just click on continue now you can leave everything else as it is so go ahead and create your account if you don't have an account or if you already have an account you can sign in i'm going to go ahead and log in since i already have an account and i'm going to show you what to do next all right so i logged in so once you log in you're going to come here put your billing address your name your information and also the payment information and then afterwards all you have to do is just click continue and click on install it's going to take like maybe a minute or so and it's going to install and here you're going to end up in the next screen right here all right so once you click on install it's going to bring you right here to your dashboard so all you have to do is click on this manage right here so this is going to open up your uh, dashboard again and show you all the different uh, server options that are running and my of course yours is going to look the same except without these little cpu usage and stuff like that so as you can see right here it says and it end and the next thing you're going to do is click on manage app here this is going to open up a separate window if this is your first time it's going to ask you to sign up for an account then go ahead and sign up for an account so i already have an account just go ahead and log in all right so i'm going to go ahead and sign in and once you sign in it's going to bring you to your uh, and then instance essentially where you can create workflows and now you can utilize things like this um, uh, switch model that's a lang chain instance so that way you can utilize separate code or you can use like local hosted models like olama chat model and everything else so this is a super useful a way to actually run any then on your own server but host it on a virtual private server in our case the vps that we refer to so as you can see this was what i was working on earlier but essentially this is what that switch model does so whether you want to use this with the lang chain code on your local hosted machine or a vps or you want to use this model selector on your cloud version if the concept is pretty much the same you basically identify inside your uh, model selector when to use these different models so you can put a condition here right and the way to put the condition here obviously you're not going to use 10 right i would say probably three or four the way to put condition here is it's going to look something like this where essentially you want to have you're building some kind of a customer complaint workflow where the model is able to dynamically switch between the different llms based on the performance of that particular workflow so again super useful update this model selector this fallback uh, chat model and ai agent as a tool i think this is very powerful and i'm like i said i'm going to build more um, more workflows and utilize these new AI agent features because they are incredible and I'm super excited for them. And by the way, if you want to learn how to monetize AI agents, make sure you check out the community. I'm going to put the link in the description. We have an entire course on how to start your AI agency with NADN, how to grab or get your first client, how to run discovery calls. We also have our own AI agency. So that's why we have a all of the examples that we provide, like how to send proposals, how to price your services and everything else. And we also recently launched actually a voice AI uh, course, including the certification, which is super, super exciting because voice AI is picking up and it's becoming really, really hot in the market, especially for clients. So make sure you check out the community because we have an amazing community members where people are there to just collaborate with each other and build amazing projects. Again, make sure you like and subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you inside the community. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.